this Flash and ActionScript 3 tutorial, which is accompanied by a free Flash source file that anyone can download, you can learn how to program the combo box component, which is drop down lists. And in this particular application, I made it to where the combo box is populated, has different lists populated into it according to what the user has chosen that they want to choose from a list. So here we have jackets, if they choose jackets. There's three jackets in there, you see. Leather, sheepskin, and wool. They choose cars. It becomes Ford Mustang, Porsche 911, and Dodge Viper. And then when they choose one, you see how it says Porsche 911, you chose Porsche 911, you chose Ford Mustang. Change the jacket list. Then it says you chose sheepskin, you chose leather. So it's pretty basic demonstration on how to make your combo box component a little more dynamic. Select create new Flash ActionScript 3 project and the first thing I'm going to do is change my stage size to maybe 240 in height. I'll leave it 550 wide, that's good. Press OK. And here I'm just going to put BG for background layer. This one I'm going to put uh, controls do a little more manually with this component this combo box but it can be created in very much the same way the other ones do dynamically so action script 3 layer controls layer and background layer in the background layer I'm just going to draw out a rectangle to serve as my background there for my little application white with a black edge okay so first thing I'm going to do for the controls layer let's make sure we lock the background layer and lock the action script 3 layer too on the controls layer let's highlight that go into the components library and grab the combo box drag that out now let's give it an instance name of CB1 combo box 1 now we can refer to it in our code using that instance name. Let's also change the width. Now I'm going to drag out a couple of button instances and work with them manually as well. In the button instance tutorial we showed you guys how to actually here we can just take this one press control C control shift V. Now we have two. We'll just give them in different instance names. Okay, so this one, go to parameters, label, we're going to change this to cars, and this label we're going to change to jackets. Okay, cars, jackets, and our combo box. We're going to make sure we have instance names on these buttons. So let's go back to the properties tab, and let's give the jackets button an instance name of jackets underscore btn just to keep it simple underscore btn cars the same thing cars underscore btn All right. now we'll just do one more thing for the controls layer and that's a dynamic text field let's drag that out let's give it an instance name of status underscore txt That looks good. Let's bring it down a little more. Let's make it about 27, nice and big, so we can see what's going on. Okay. Also drag these down a little. This should only be one line, so let's go single line. So not much data is going to be displayed there. Let's make it a little smaller. Okay, now we're ready to add the code that we need to bring everything together. Let's make this black so we can see it. That'd be nice, huh? Actually, let's make it green. Okie dokie. Alright. Now, 
right about there to where it's even under those two buttons as best we can okay now we can code it out in the action script 3 layer we can go ahead and lock the controls layer let's make sure our text fields right status single line yes yes great okie dokie now we can lock the controls layer too in the action script 3 layer let's press F9 to open our actions panel start coding it in first thing we're going to do is create a couple of functions for populating the list according to what the user presses what they would like to choose from cars or jackets let's put a colon here void open curly brace and close curly brace now what we're going to do is add objects or add items rather to CB1 and their label so we'll add item we open parenthesis close parenthesis and the semicolon and within the parenthesis we open curly brace and close curly brace now within the two curly braces all we have to do is type in label colon and then give it a string whatever label you want this will be Ford Mustang that's good let's get some spacing in here okay now the next one is going to be very similar so you just grab that whole line let's go down one line pop it in and one more now once we have those in we change the values here with the label which will be the value when it gets sent in a form type situation okay so Porsche 911 and let's change this one to Dodge Viper okay so we got Ford Mustang, Porsche 911 and Dodge Viper so what's going to happen is this is not going to populate this combo box right away it's just a function waiting that we are going to fire off at the appropriate times to populate that combo box with this list so let's grab that whole list let's make another list called jackets list so we have jacket list now let's just change these we're going to use the same combo box I'm just going to switch the lists leather what are the kind of jackets we want here how about sheepskin and maybe a wool jacket okay so now we have our two functions that are going to populate the lists when we need them to so now we're going to add a function here that's going to be for the cars button and we're going to add another function for the jackets button so when they get clicked so let's type in function let's do the cars button first cars btn click that's the function name this is going to be event and mouse event colon void open curly brace close curly brace there's our function nest for the cars button click function now oops now we need an event listener so we say cars underscore btn is that the name we gave it let's make sure cars underscore btn and jackets underscore btn so cars underscore btn dot add event listener and it's going to be a mouse event for this click function here so let's type in mouse event dot click all caps comma and the name of the function will go right there so let's pop it in cars button click 
right there. Okay. So now we can take that. Control C. Actually, let's go ahead and make the event listener for the jackets button really quick. And this one will change the name of the function so we don't get duplicate function name error. And this one will be jackets. That way they have the listeners are corresponding to separate functions. So we need a function for that jackets button. Let's call it jacket button click. There it is. Okay. Now since we're using it in this type of situation, the first thing that has to be done when each button is clicked is we have to remove the data within the combo box. If we don't, it will just keep stacking in and adding more and more data, adding items. So we have to claim CV1 dot remove all. So that will remove all the items that were previously previously inside of the combo box. Okay, so we remove all, then the next line is going to be running the car list function here, executing it. There's our custom function that we made. Now we're going to execute it right here. Make it run at that moment. So what's going to happen is the combo box gets cleared of any items that were in it that are in it, and then it gets populated with whatever list you like according to what button the user presses. And we need one more thing here so we can show some status about what's going on. So we claim the status text field is equal to a string that will say you clicked on the cars button. And that's that. Now, the data within this function is going to be very much the same. We remove, when they click the jackets button, we remove all the items because we don't want cars in our list. So we remove all the items and we put the jackets list inside. Jacket list, this function will execute and add these items to the list. First they'll be removed, of course, and then we add the items. Then we say in the static text field, you clicked on the jackets button. And that's pretty much that. Now let's put one more event listener, CB1, for the combo box itself, for the on change event. So let's grab this, add event listener, open close parenthesis, and semicolon. Now within the parenthesis here, this is going to be a change event so let's claim event dot change comma and the function that we want to fire off on this change event when the combo box you know when they bring down the drop down list and they select something from it that is the change event and we're going to have something fire off when that happens this function right here that I'm about to create Let's call it display selection. This is going to be quick and easy. Let's see, let's grab this line right here. Put it right here. Let's go down one more line. Let's say function, close off the function nest, change the function name to display selection. And this is going to be event colon event we don't want to say mouse event there and now we're just going to put something in a status text field which is going to be a string that says you chose and then we're going to append to that text with the value of what they chose so you you claim you get the value of what they chose by doing this cb1 dot selected item dot label 
so it'll pull that selected items label into whatever you need it to go to maybe if you're using this in a form situation you want to send this to in the form to uh, you your if a form <laughs> sorry if people are using a form on your site and you want to send this data to yourself in an email or place it into a database that's how you access the value of what they chose right there okay so I think that's everything everything should be good to go so now let's press control enter press cars button it says you clicked on the cars button and look at that we have a cars list in there now the Ford, the Porsche and Dodge and when I choose Dodge Viper it says you chose you chose Dodge Viper it's exactly what we wanted now if I click the jackets button it should clear this list and put jackets in this list and not cars you clicked on the jackets button and inside the list is three jackets types sheepskin wool and leather click on the cars list it's back to cars okay so that shows you a, a pretty strong level of dynamics about how the combo box works and I was using it a little more manually this time just drag dragging it out to stage from my components library instead of creating it dynamically all through code but you can d create those dynamically all through code just like anything else it's very easy and before we wrap this little example application up on the controls layer I'm just gonna slap some graphics I have here in fireworks I'm gonna group that modify flatten the selection control C let's bring it into flash put it right there on the controls layer by pressing control V bring it in as a movie clip and there it is cars and jackets let's put that on the bottom layer there we go that is beautiful let's bring these down a little there we go beautiful okay we'll see you guys next lesson